What's cracking, Code Clowns? This is Ed from my Bring Back, and I'm sort of reviewing the videos that we've put out here so far for Python. And I come to the realization that almost everything we've done has been within the comfortable confines of that pre-installed idle application that allows us to compose scripts and run them in a little shell. And that is a very limited way to look at things. You can use Python to interact with all sorts of other software and with, uh, you know, the files stored locally on your machine. So we're going to start exploring how to do that from the command line today just to give you a little bit of different perspective. So let's change gears and take a look. All right, so here we are at my desktop. We have exited the comfortable confines of that idle application. And what I'm going to do here within Windows is I'm going to run a PowerShell. And PowerShell is an application that gives you access to a terminal, uh, pardon me, a terminal emulator within Windows. And there are alternatives, of course, if you're using a Mac, if you're running Linux, there are things out there. It's most likely you'll find yourself in Bash. The syntax will be a little bit different, but not to the extent that it's going to be troublesome for us within these videos. Put some resources up here for you if you want to go read. If you're using something that's not Bash, it's probably likely you don't need my help navigating a terminal, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that today. But here we are within the PowerShell. I found myself with a home directory here, and if I run the command Python within this shell, what will happen is it just launches the Python interpreter. So I can do all those things I would do within the shell in idle, and nothing is too wacky there. I can get out of this interpreter by passing it the exit function, which takes me back just to the regular shell. But we're looking to work from the Windows shell entirely as opposed to just within the Python interpreter. So to do that, we're going to call Python and pass it a script to run. So let's go ahead and make a very basic script to see how that goes. And there's probably a couple of you out there saying, wait, Ed, I didn't get into the interpreter. I wasn't able to find that Python executable when I just typed the command into the shell here. And I'll say, OK, before we get to a script, we better briefly examine how to add Python to what's called your system path. So within Windows, which is really the OS which you should have this difficulty in, or rather the only OS in which you should encounter this difficulty, we're going to go to my computer, right click, and hit Properties. And I'm going to go to Advanced System Settings here. And I'm going to click on Environment Variables. And if I go down here to Path, I can hit Edit. And you'll see it's a big old long string. So if I double click, or rather, click in here and hit Control A to select everything, Control C to copy, open up a text editor, and Control V, you'll see I've got a big old long string of characters, if I can get this maximized, which has system paths that contain folders which have applications that I can call from the shell. And you'll want to make sure that within this big old string you have somewhere the location of your Python executable. So in my case, let's take a look. Here we go. And that would be C colon backslash Python 27. You'll notice that all the elements in this path are separated by semicolons. So if you couldn't run Python from the command line, go ahead and make sure you append to your path that string there, uh, or, or, or an equivalent string for your system, which indicates where Python is stored. If you need help with that, Microsoft has some good information about editing the system path. I'll, I'll link the help page for you here and wish you the best of luck. OK, so hopefully that wasn't too much difficulty for everybody. And we all have Python on our Windows system path, or we're using a more sensible operating system, and we encountered no difficulty there. Let's make a basic script, and we're going to do it in a text editor. Notepad here is a pretty <laughs> feature light piece of software for this, but we can compose a Python script with very little difficulty. So let's do something simple like, uh, let's just say you did it. All right. And that should just print you did it out. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go ahead and save it just to my home directory there, users in my bring back. And we'll save this thing as, let's just call it shell test. Dot .py, and make sure we're saving this not as a text document, but all files, and we provide the extension ourselves that .py file. So we'll save it, and I'll go ahead and minimize it. We'll go back to our shell, and because it's in the directory where I am located currently within the shell, we can see this by the ls command, which is common between shells. I have shell test.py down here, so if I run Python and shell test.py, 
You did it, it printed. So we have executed our script from the command line. We composed our script with a notepad. We didn't have to use idle at all to get any of these things done. Obviously, this is a wildly trivial accomplishment, but for this first video, I just wanted to get you folks comfortable working from within your system shell. We'll do some more exciting things as time progresses, but for now, this is Ed for my bring back. Keep coming back, subscribe and watching these videos, share them with folks, and we'll get you ready to go ahead and use Python to change the world, man.